video takedowns. And apparently she's being called out recently related to some apparently fraudulent copyright strikes infringement. Now, do you see this YouTuber in this video or is this stream just pure theft of BBC content? Anime betrayals. Why would I care to prove my innocence to a bunch of nobodies on the internet? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, definitely not guilty. Today we'll be looking into the story of one of the most infamous female creators on all of YouTube, who single-handedly caused massive controversy in the community. And the insane part is, all of this was caused by an anime reaction channel. But how could that be? Well, today we'll find out. Susie Liu is an anime and gaming reaction YouTuber from Scotland. She chose that stage name because of her affection for an anime character, and out of a desire to keep her real identity hidden from the internet. Susie started her YouTube channel in April of 2013, and began uploading Let's Play content, mainly focused on the Resident Evil series and similar horror titles. Over the years, the account grew steadily in subscribers, as she expanded into the genre of reaction videos for movie and video game trailers. Along the way, she entered a relationship with another YouTuber named Stijo, and for a while their online presence was largely untouched by controversy, except for a brief moment in September of 2017, when she criticized UK McDonald's staff who were striking for higher wages, saying that they should get an actual decent job and stop expecting handouts. The real problems began in March of 2019. Things went downhill when fellow creator Mark After Dark tweeted at Susie, claiming that she had issued a false DMCA takedown against one of his videos. The upload in question, about PlayStation's The Last Guardian VR, used a brief clip from Susie's video discussing the same game, making a joke regarding her emotional reaction to playing the title before Mark began his own commentary. Many in the community were baffled as to why it was struck down, and Susie's reasoning was stranger than anyone expected. Her response was to say that she quote-unquote owned the copyright to her own face, a statement that has no real legal meaning. She also claimed that Mark had used her name and image to boost the views of his own video, even though neither was specifically mentioned in the title or thumbnail. Unsurprisingly, these arguments were not received well by the public, with much ire being sent in the woman's direction. In response to the hate, Susie posted a video responding to the situation. In it, she claims that YouTube was the party responsible for removing Mark's video and that she had nothing to do with it. However, many were quick to rebuke her statement due to the fact that YouTube's content ID tool is operated by copyright holders, who in this case would be Susie herself. On top of this, she had already admitted to doing it on Twitter. Unsurprisingly, this response did not quell the discourse, and as a result, Susie Liu's content began getting scrutinized more closely. The main topic of discussion was the fact that the majority of her content was based on reacting to copyrighted content that she does not own. This led to a large hypocrisy angle to the story. Twitch streamer Becky Boop had also previously tweeted a video showing Susie's YouTube channel live streaming the BBC's coverage of the 2016 presidential election. With no additional commentary or footage, Susie had addressed this incident in her initial response video to Mark After Dark, admitting that her usage of the BBC's content did not fall under fair use, but justified it by saying that the usage was not malicious or done with the intent of growing her channel. Of course, onlookers were quick to point out that the same could be said for Mark's joke. The situation only continued spiraling out of control from there. But commentators found themselves facing peculiar obstacles when trying to talk about it. Creator Tipster posted an interview with YouTube lawyer Ian Corzine discussing the legal nature of Mark's clip. Corzine's conclusion was that the segment was, quote, obviously fair use. But after discussing Susie Liu's use of the copyright system, Tipster's video was mysteriously taken down without warning for violating YouTube's community guidelines under harassment and bullying. Not only that, but around this time, many other channels who posted videos about Susie and her situation found their own content getting removed as well. 
it seemed that anyone who approached the topic, even when only being mildly critical, was hit with a strike. And there was only one person whose spectators of the drama believed could be behind it. Soon enough, Susie herself would confront her critics live on air as the internet watched. We'll learn more about this after a brief word from our sponsor. Getting into the world of colognes can be a daunting task for most men. Going to the store uninformed and just buying something really expensive off the shelf just doesn't seem like a good idea, which is where today's sponsor, Scentbird, comes into play. This is a website that allows you to discover your style and build your collection. So how exactly does it work? Well, Scentbird lets you choose a new designer fragrance to try every month for just $17. You'll get to pick what you want to receive so there's no surprises. They have perfumes and colognes and a lot of unisex options. And the best part is, is with each fragrance, you'll get a 30-day supply so you can try out fragrances before committing to a full-size bottle. That can cost you over $150, and some even in the $300 to $500 range. Based on your preferences, previous purchases, and quiz answers, they'll help you find the fragrance you'll love. I've personally been liking using Modern Gentleman by Joseph About. The bright herbs, sweet florals, and masculine musks blend together to create a scent that really works for me. And the best part is, if you click the link in the description down below and use code GFM at checkout, you'll get 55% off your Scentbird order. That means for just a little over $7, you can try out the service for yourself, which is a no-brainer. I implore anyone watching to at least click the link in the description down below to see if there's anything that might be a good fit for you. After much drama in the online space, it was about time that the reaction YouTuber confronted the allegations levied against her head on. This brings us to March 31st, when Susie Liu appeared on RFC After Hours, an internet news show with her boyfriend Stijo to address the situation. The stream's host asked the couple to show their flag history to the audience, if they truly wished to prove that they were not the ones responsible for the rampant takedowns. Stijo's history showed nothing of note, but when it was her turn, Susie seemed reluctant. I don't care, I want to see your flag history. I mean, this is, this is vital. If you want to prove your innocence, you got to show your flag history. Why would I care to prove my innocence to a bunch of nobodies on the internet? <laughs> <laughs> oh, definitely not guilty. You flag tipster. While she initially stood her ground, the controversial creator finally relented after enough prodding. And when she revealed her flag history, it became clear why she was so reluctant to do so. It was revealed that she had filed multiple claims of hateful or abusive content against GG Reloaded, a YouTuber who had posted several videos about the strikes his fellow creators had been receiving. At this point, there was no denying that Suzy was the culprit. Throughout the rest of 2019, Suzy Liu continued to plow forward, and criticism against her began to sporadically disappear as she chose to simply distance herself from the whole affair. She was even featured in YouTube Rewind 2019, reacting to the previous year's deeply hated celebrity video. During this time, she also began to transition the focus of her content away from gaming and towards anime reactions. These videos contain nearly full-length clips from episodes of various shows, while Susie watched and provided a little in terms of commentary. Simultaneously, Stijo made a similar transition, and both creators found solid success in their new genre of choice. The question of copyright came up here once again, because while Suzy did apply some transformational edits to the copyrighted footage she reacted to, she still presented a significant amount of anime in its unedited form. Her critics lambasted this change, stating that the majority of the content was just Susie sitting in a room watching anime in the corner of the screen. Others wondered if perhaps this is the kind of actual decent job that she once encouraged McDonald's workers to seek out. Eventually, these reaction videos attracted the attention of the IP holders. On December 27th, the Suzy Lu channel received multiple copyright strikes from Tokyo TV, the owners of Naruto, which had been the subject of the reactor's most popular videos. Per YouTube's policy, the channel was terminated. However, this only 
only lasted less than 48 hours, and Susie soon returned with a response video in which she claimed that she would be taking legal action against the Japanese-based company. Although nothing ever came of this. But beyond the empty threat, the way she described the situation in the video revealed something interesting. Her YouTube partner manager had allegedly been the one to reverse the strikes against the account. This means that YouTube had directly involved themselves in the dispute, restoring the channel regardless of the legitimacy of the strikes against it. This caused many to wonder why Suzy was receiving this apparent special treatment from the platform. Suzy's relationship with YouTube was the main topic of YouTuber John Swan's very popular video about her, uploaded in April of 2020. The callout attacked the creator's apparent hypocrisy and usage of the content ID system as a weapon against dissenting voices, detailing every event which had drawn the ire towards the anime fan. As you can guess, the original version of this video was removed from YouTube under the harassment and cyberbullying guidelines. YouTube's official Twitter account responded to John, defending the deletion due to personal attacks he had made against Susie and Stejo in the video. But censoring these insults did not quell the outrage against the anime reactor. One insult, about the size of Susie's forehead, spread like wildfire and gave birth to memes that very likely would have received community guideline strikes of their own. Criticism in regards to Susie's alleged hypocrisy only increased when it was discovered that she had been posting uncut versions of her anime reactions to her Patreon, charging the viewers to watch the complete episodes of TV shows that she did not own the copyright to. These uploads were taken down from the paywalled service soon after, leading many to assume she learned her lesson. However, people would soon find out that they were still available on her very own website, which allowed her to not have to deal with Patreon's pesky terms of service. Interestingly enough, Suzy's website was unavailable to visitors from Japan and other parts of Asia, which she claimed was a matter of licensing issues. But the domain is also hosted on Abello Host, an offshore company that helps users avoid copyright issues. Swan's video opened a new wave of investigation with even more backlash following soon after. When onlookers on Twitter tried to encourage people to simply pay for a subscription to the streaming platform Crunchyroll in order to support the creators of the anime Suzy reacted to, she snapped back by claiming the service was running ads on her website, and therefore was showing direct support for her practices. The thing is, online sleuths were quickly able to deduce that the ads were simply placed there automatically by Google, and was not actually a direct partnership between the YouTuber and Crunchyroll. On April 18th, 2020, YouTuber Vera Dark uploaded a video in which she shared an anonymous email she received after uploading a video about the infamous anime reactor. The message advised Dark to delete all of her uploads which were critical of Suzy, or her channel might find itself quote-unquote in hot water. While there were obviously many who pinned the blame on the reaction YouTuber herself, others suspected it may have been the act of an overzealous fan, as Susie herself denounced the act on Twitter. Hours after receiving the email, Dark found that her web hosting account had been hacked, and the credit card on file had been used to spend nearly $1,000. Tipster, who had been covering each development in this story, interviewed the Twitch streamer Becky Boop in April of 2020 where she claimed that she had been harassed by Suzy Liu for years non-stop, after posting footage of her election livestream back in 2016. If I don't stop talking about her, if anyone mentions her in any way, or even if they don't, even if they just talk about anything and she thinks it has to do with them, then the attacking starts, then the harassment starts, and this is an example of that. Like many YouTube drama cases of this nature, though, while criticism may have burned bright for a while, it eventually faded away. You see, as is the case with most YouTubers involved in endless drama, all that Suzy needed to do to stop the incessant backlash was to no longer engage her critics, and soon enough the community moved on to other nefarious figures in the space. Today, she maintains her channel and website with mild success, continuing to post anime reactions on both platforms. She and Stejo became engaged in June of 2022, and they continued to collaborate on reaction 
content on their various channels. Although criticism of her content and usage of the copyright system still persists whenever her name is brought up in discussion, it has been largely dormant since 2020. So there you have the story of Susie Liu, a woman who figured out if you stop getting into online fights, the heat against you subsides, a lesson most controversial online figures have yet to learn. And with that, I think I'll end the video here. So until next time, thanks for watching.